بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم جی وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ پرسیپٹ آن کلاسیفائڈ اینڈ وی ریویوڈ اینڈ اینالائزڈ دس پرسیپٹ آن لرننگ الگوریدم ان ڈیٹیل وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا جیومیٹرک اینڈ ٹیوشن آف پرسیپٹ آن لرننگ الگوریدم ہیئر وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ دا کنورجنس آف دس الگوریدم ان فیکٹ دا پرسیپٹ آن واز دا فرسٹ الگوریدم ود اے اسٹرانگ فارمل گارنٹی اف وی ہیو اے ڈیٹا سیٹ دیٹ از لینئرلی سیپریبل The perceptron will always find a separating hyperplane in a finite number of updates. If the data is not linearly separable, the perceptron learning algorithm will loop forever. Okay, to formally prove this convergence, we start with some assumptions. And the first one is uh, we always take that data is linearly separable. And if the data is linearly separable, there exists W star such that yi x i transpose w star is greater than 0 for every point in the training data how do you interpret this that we do not have any misclassification or every x i every feature vector is on the right side is on the correct side of the hyperplane so all all points which have label 1 are on one side of the hyperplane and all labels all points which are labeled minus 1 uh, are on the other side of the hyperplane so we do not have uh, any misclassification or w star defines a hyperplane defines a separating hyperplane that separates the points of two classes in the feature space right without loss of generality we rescale each data point and w star such that the norm of w star is equal to 1 and the norm of every feature vector is bounded above by unity if you visualize this in the feature space it means that w star lies on the boundary of the unit sphere and all the inputs lie inside the unit sphere because w star is equal to 1 norm of w star is equal to 1 it means that's on the boundary of unit sphere or unit ball and all of the points are or the feature points are inside the unit sphere or inside the unit ball right we also note here that we have defined a quantity and uh, we have labeled a quantity here gamma so this gamma is the margin of the hyperplane and sometimes we call it classification margin it it is a distance of the hyperplane from the it is the distance from the hyperplane to the closest data point we have right if this green is the separating hyperplane in this example this red point here this is the closest point to this hyperplane and therefore the distance from the hyperplane to this point is the margin for this example mathematically it is simply given by you take a distance of every point from w star and that is given by x i w star and you take absolute value because w this this can be positive or negative depending on uh, the angle between x i and w star and then you take a minimum over the training data set and this gives us the margin so we are all set to state the convergence theorem the theorem states that under these assumptions the perceptron algorithm makes at most 1 over gamma square misclassification or we can say we have an upper bound on the number of misclassifications and that upper bound is given by 1 over gamma square so if we have more classification margin if a more distance between hyperplane and closest data point we will have less misclassifications how do you interpret this geometrically uh, does it make sense to you if we have more margin that means we can fit a fat hyperplane or we can fit or there is uh, there is a very clear separation between the two classes if this is the case the algorithm would converge quickly or algorithm would uh, would carry out 
would would uh, would face less number of mistakes would make less number of mistakes right okay let let's start with the proof of this theorem so we begin with uh, some of uh, the effect on the update we carry out in each iteration uh, on, on two quantities we'll we'll start with an effect of an update on w new and w star the inner product between w new and w star okay in our algorithm this event corresponds to misclassification that xi is on the wrong side of the hyperplane defined by w if this is the case we know that we update w and we update using this equation so w is the update the weight vector in the previous iteration and w new is the updated weight vector in the current iteration and we want to find out how can we relate the inner product of w star with w and w star with w new so we begin with by writing inner product of w new with w star and if i substitute w new is equal to w plus y i x i and if we expand this we get w transpose w star and we have y i x i transpose w star and if we follow the definition of the classification margin we know that this quantity y i x i transpose w star would be equal to x i transpose w star the distance of the point from the optimal hyperplane w star and we know that this is bounded because closest point is at least gamma from uh, the hyperplane w star and therefore x i transpose w star should be greater than or equal to gamma and if i use this information in conjunction with this equation i get this inequality that w new transpose w star is greater than or equal to w transpose w star plus gamma let's also note the effect of an update on w new transpose times w new so we want to find out what is the effect of update and how or how can we relate the inner product of weight with itself with the updated weight vector inner product with itself right we again start with w new transpose w new and when we use uh, the fact that w new is w plus y i x i so using this we can expand in this form so this is the product of three quantities first we note that y i square is always one because y i can be one or minus one but y i square is one and since we impose the condition that the norm of every x i is bounded above by unity x i transpose x can have the maximum value equal to one right or we can say x i transpose x i is less than or equal to one right okay two y i w transpose x i right this will be always less than or equal to zero consequently w transpose new into w new would be less than or equal to w transpose w plus one so if you interpret this first result second result that this is summary of this for each update with each update the inner product of w 
with W star grows by at least gamma. And with each update, the inner product of weight vector with itself grows by at most one. So both of these inner products grow. So one is growing by at least gamma and the other one is growing by at most uh, one. So using these two results, uh, we can continue with the proof. So let me summarize. So we have, this is from one and this the other is from two. So the interpretation is that this W transpose new W star grows by at most, by at least gamma and the inner product of weight vector with itself grows by at most one. So after M updates, we have M times gamma would be less than W transpose W star because with each iteration, so this quantity grows by at least gamma. So after M updates, after M number of misclassifications encountered by the learning algorithm, we'll have a lower bound on W transpose W star. So at least this quantity must have grown by, by this number M, M into gamma. Right? Uh, we also note we can write W transpose W star is equal to uh, W transpose W star magnitude and that is less than equal to W the norm of W into norm of W star. This simply follows from the fact from the definition of angle between W and W star. We know that W transpose W star is equal to cosine of the angle between W and W star times norm of W, norm of W star. And since cosine of the angle has maximum value equal to one, and therefore W transpose W star would be less than norm of W, norm of W star. And this is known as Cauchy-Schwarz inequality in literature. Right? Since we had a constraint on W star that the norm of W star is equal to one. So we can drop W star from here. And we only have M gamma less than equal to W. Right? So I can write the norm of W as square root of W transpose W. Do we have any upper bound on W transpose W. If you use equation two, so W transpose W grows by at most one. We can say W transpose W after M updates would be less than or equal to M. Or square root of this would be less than or equal to square root of M. So this follows from the second equation and this follows from the first equation after some manipulation. And if we combine these two, we get M gamma would be less than or equal to square root of M. You take square on both sides, you get M squared gamma squared less than or equal to M. And finally we have capital M less than or equal to one over gamma square. How do you interpret this? That after M number of updates or the number of updates you carry out must be less than or equal to one over gamma square where gamma is the margin, the distance of the separating hyperplane to the closest data point. So with this result, we can say the theorem is proved since the number of updates is equal to the number of misclassifications. So perceptron learning algorithm cannot make less than one over gamma square number of mistakes. Right? And we again note that we have used the key, the two key interpretations that effect of update in each iteration. 
and that was W transpose W star grows by at least gamma and W transpose W grows by at most one. So using these two interpretations, using these two effects, we have derived this, uh, we, have, we have proved this theorem. Right? So that's the end of perceptron classifier and perceptron learning algorithm. So in summary, a perceptron can be used to classify given data but it cannot be used to estimate the probability of x or generate x given y and due to this uh, we classify we categorize perceptron classifier as a discriminative algorithm perceptron, perceptron classifier assumes that the classes are linearly separable it does not make any additional assumptions about the data we do not make we do not assume that the features are independent uh, or we, we impose any other conditions uh, on the data the only assumption is the classes are linearly separable since we are updating the weights using one data point at one point in time and therefore the perceptron classifier is an online learning algorithm if you get new data points you can update the vectors iteratively and learning algorithm is based on the principle that it uses mistakes during learning to iteratively update the weights. If you misclassify data point, you either add to the weight vector or you subtract from the weight vector. And we have uh, to, in this video we have shown that under certain assumptions, the learning algorithm converges and gives you the hyperplane separating the classes. Right. So we stop here. In the next video, we'll start with support vector machines. Uh, thank you, Jim. Enough is.